that you can join us this evening. My name is Dara Dever. I manage the Green Campus Programme for Antarctica. Um, this evening we have uh, John Barrymore from UCC. We have Maria Karan from uh, the Sustainability Officer in UCC and Neve uh, Gairi, um, who's a student in UCC, uh, who's, who's going to speak to. And my colleague, uh, Grania Ryan, uh, is a Climate Action Officer with Shantashka, joining us too. And I appreciate everybody that's here sharing their uh, Thursday evening with us. And um, today's workshop, you know, is for both staff and students together. So a students as partners approach and to explore common challenges and opportunities with education for sustainable development in higher ed. And as Dara was saying, the input's gonna be used, um, harvested, and it's gonna be to create a synthesis report to be shared across the Green Campus Network, as well as with um, the Higher Education Authority and the National Forum who have funded this work. And the um, just a bit about the, the format of the workshop, it, it's gonna be a couple, you know, it's going to be like a one or two short talks and then going into a breakout room. And in the breakout room, we're going to be using a little bit of collaborative technology called Google Jamboard, which is kind of fun once you, you know, just take, might take a minute to get the hang of it, but it's, kind of, it's actually kind of fun. And the first session is going to look at sort of basically the challenges and opportunities um, with ESD and that are common, trying to get a sense of commonality across institutions. And the second is, um, Works, you know, a breakout room is going to be basically a brainstorming and looking for ways that we can collaborate um, and work with common purpose around ESD. And um, I'm just going to show you a real quick slide here, just so we have like a, you know, everybody sort of on the same page with a, you know, a, a workable um, definition for ESD. And you've probably seen this one before. I hope I hope you see it right now. But it's really it, it's equipping learners with the relevant knowledge, the what the key dispositions and skills, which is the how, and the values, which is the why of sustainability. And this is also expressed as the head, heart, and hands model in ESD literature. And this all comes back from the 1950s with Bloom's taxonomy with the domains, which are the cognitive, the effective, and, and the psychomotor. And in higher ed, everything, there seems to be more emphasis on the um, on that sort of cognitive piece. So it's really trying to, thinking more in terms of the whole the whole person. And with the aim of really motivating and empowering, you know, the learners, and so that sustainability becomes a part of their lives, in their professional, you know, uh, personal lives, and really just, you know, hoping to drive a, a more sustainable society for all of us. And again, we're we're going to be using um, the Google Jamboard as a way to, you know, um, harvest information. But please also, um, you know, any thoughts, ideas, if you can put them in either the, you know, the chat stream during this, you know. The more the merrier on this, the more information we get will, will really help the process along. So um, because again, this is going to be used as a, um, as a synthesis um, document. So without any further ado, I'd like to um, present our, our first uh, presenter, uh, Neve um, Nigairi, who um, 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 is a student at UCC. So uh, Neve, the floor is yours. Thanks, John. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Neve Gary, and I'm a member of the UCC Green Campus team. I'm delighted to be here for these workshops. Um, so I'm going to be speaking about my experiences with sustainability and the SDGs within kind of college life and within the curriculum from a student's perspective. So I started college in 2016 with minimal knowledge about the SDGs or environmentalism. I would hear things about climate change and sustainable development, but I never really properly engaged with sustainability and I was never active in any environmental groups at the time. So my undergrad was in microbiology and at the end of my second year I ran for a committee position on the UCC Environmental Society and I joined the society because I was interested in these issues and I just wanted to learn more and then that's where I first encountered the SDGs. Um, in my undergrad I remember the SDGs being mentioned once over the four years. I remember the lecturer asking us if anyone knew what the SDGs was and um, that was kind of it. Uh, I think about three people raised their hands. And we touched on environmental issues very briefly through the context of things like biofuels or GMOs. But overall, there is very little engagement with sustainability, climate change or environmental issues. And we all know that the SDGs are linked into all aspects of our, of our lives and our society and should be discussed in all courses, really. But the fact that there wasn't proper engagement with environmental issues, especially in a science course where it could have so easily been brought in, really seems like a missed opportunity. 
And then in my final year, I was chairperson of EnviroSoc and co-chair of Green Campus. And then it was through events and talking to staff who are working in these areas and researching that I heard about the SDGs more and more. Um, but largely it was kind of on me to do my own research and find that information about sustainable development and SDGs and environmentalism in general. And then it was during my final year in college that environmentalism, I realized that's what I wanted to do. So I switched disciplines and decided to pursue a master's in environmental law. And I don't actually remember the, the SDGs being specifically mentioned during my master's, but obviously we dealt with issues that addressed the, that we dealt with issues that were addressed and are addressed through the SDGs. But again, it just seems like a, a missed opportunity not to equip students with um, a focused knowledge on sustainable development who are going out and working in sustainable and environmental fields. But for me, um, besides my master's that was environmental focused, um, I've learned most about sustainability through friends, through talking to people at events or climate marches and not through the curriculum of my undergrad. And we do have a college wide sustainability module that's open to all students in UCC. And I really wanted to do that module when I was a student, but I just didn't actually have the time. And since it wouldn't have counted towards my final grade, I just couldn't afford to take it on, unfortunately. The Green Campus Network that exists and that kind of relationship between staff and students, I think, is really fantastic because staff have that knowledge and access to resources that students might ne not necessarily have. But it can be intimidating for students to be in staff spaces because it can be hard to speak your mind on issues when there's kind of a clear hierarchy. And then it's also challenging to engage with students who are not actively interested in environmental issues or who aren't studying courses related to environmentalism. That's something that we always struggled with in EnviroSoc because it's easy to preach to the choir, but we need everyone to be equipped with the knowledge of sustainable development and the importance of social justice and human rights and not leaving anybody behind within climate action and sustainable development. So open dialogue between students and staff can be really productive uh, and enriching, but only if we're all listening to each other, um, because there's been times in the past where I've been in staff spaces. And while it's great because we had student representation there and we had a seat at a table, at times it felt like I wasn't really being listened to. Um, so I think conversations like the ones we're going to have tonight are really valuable and sharing individual experiences about sustainable initiatives and challenges and solutions that people have found um, is great because we can learn so much from each other and that community element of sustainability is so important you know that support and solidarity is really powerful um, for me from working with students and staff to make real progress and integrate positive change I think we need genuine and open discussions and it's through that that I think we can make some real positive changes. Um, so that's all from me from now. So thanks for listening and I'll pass you back to John. Um, thanks very much, Neve. Thanks for uh, sharing your insights there. And um, I'm just gonna move things along here and share a screen again. And I just wanna to talk to you just a little bit about a, a project we had, we just sort of brought to completion at UCC, which was creating a resource to enhance, um, um, you know, teaching and learning for our, for our staff, and this is actually set up as an all Ireland resource. So it's like, and this is any HEI, you know, in Ireland. We try to keep it as generic and as regionally as applicable as possible for that. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen again, and um, make sure I got the right one. I think it's this one here. Okay. Uh, so hopefully everybody sees uh, um, the uh, the slide there, and so this is just the you know a general idea of what this SDG toolkit, which has became to known, is, is about, and is creating and curating. So gathering up the resources for the teaching staff, and it's really to make it as easy as possible, or to try to almost be a catalyst to um, for them to bring sustainability in the SDGs into their curriculum. And at UCC is enabled by a strategy, um, actually several strategies, but this one in particular was the academic strategy, which is you know directly supported. So, and I can't stress you know from people at other other institutions how important if you can get the strategy in place or this language in the strategy, it really helps other parts of the process to go along. So the next slide is just to give you a tiny window into the process, and um, it started with a consultation process, um, um, staff and students alike. Um, and talking to the students, there are very similar stories to what um, um, 
Steve was saying um, about, you know, wishing it was more there or wishing there was a way to take that um, um, university wide um, sustainability module or and get credit for it, you know, to apply toward their degree program. Um, so this is, you know, so this is not actually, that's not an outlier from what I've, what I've heard. And these consultations were probably, you know, primarily at least began at UCC, but it extended outward um, to other places like the, you know, EAUC and, you know, the other people that are involved with, um, you know, sustainability at this point. Um, it was, it was um, piloted, you know, these techniques and uh, tools were pi piloted across the college. And, um, and, and the key to this we found is, is sort of enabling the staff through workshops. So trying to bring them up to speed and, and getting this within their comfort zone. So, so far, you know, 87 participants, uh, 14 of those were HGIs outside of UCC. So again, we're trying to, you know, share this around as much as possible because, you know, we, we do need to, you know, th there isn't really time to waste on, on a lot of these issues. Um, and again, this, this web page is now live. It's something that you can go to. It's, um, if you just Google SDG Toolkit UCC, it will come up, um, I guarantee you that. Um, so just a, an idea to, to think about is this was, providing initial on ramp. So this is for really, the, the, the intent of this was to hit all disciplines and all levels, which was a challenge. So, um, so again, trying to provide these initial on ramps, but to also keep it interesting for people who've been on this journey for a while. So providing, you know, databases and um, um, case studies and all sorts of things that people were looking for the more advanced area. But some of the basic stuff was just like you see here are the five P's and just really bringing it in and talking about the 2030 agenda right from the start. So trying to bring people up to speed and also, you know, things that be, could be copied and pasted and put into a PowerPoint slide to, to, to you know, do this initial presentation in the class. Um, another bit we found through um, was that many staff actually hit SDGs, but unknowingly, they're, they're in these areas, you know, and I think my favorite one at this, this point in time is vaccine development. That's, you know, that's a specific SDG target. So it's just hard to be working in some of these areas and not, um, and not be hitting SDGs really. And so the idea was is to help them, the staff, realize the, the connections between the SDGs and their existing curriculum and see where they can then make it more intentional and then talk about the SDGs and, and use this as a, a sort of a common thread through the curriculum. There's a couple of other variations of this mapping tool. And what I also like to point out, it is, it is licensed in the Collective Commons. And the only um, really caveat there is it's, you can't be making money on it, right? So, so feel free to, you know, you can feel free to adapt this, however, to meet your institutional needs. Um, another piece that, you know, the staff and students alike were asking for somewhere to get information. And now students are starting to use this in their sort so their assignments if it's inquiry based. Um, but also with the staff themselves that they can bring these resources into the into either their their learning management system like Canvas or Blackboard or show this in, in, in within the classroom. So there's little short videos, there's graphics, there's um, you know, all kinds of ideas of how to bring this into your curriculum. Sort of the, the ESD philosophy is all in here too. But within this library of resources, and I'd say it sort of starts at the, the, the introductory levels and then kind of increases in complexity as you go down the list. But if you go to, these are sort of anchor links on the web page. If you were to click on one of those, it would take you right to the background information. You could scroll through, through this and you might find say a video such as this. And it's, it's sort of like an annotated bibliography where there's some kind of, there's keywords, there's, you know, telling you what the resource is. If you want to go to specific SDGs or into the different pillars, this is all here. So right now we're hoping to sort of enhance this, but right now it's kind of a scrolling through or at least control F to do like your own sort of rudimentary keyword search. Um, and I think um, that's it for right now. So I'm gonna, actually this brings us to the next point. So I'm just gonna leave this slide up here for a second and um, sort of bring us into the, um, into the first of the, of the breakout rooms. So um, just to, to, to say is this first one really is about, um, thinking about challenges and opportunities. So, you know, staff and students may be saying different things are very similar things, but really, you know, at least from staff, you may be thinking about, well, what within the system prevents me from doing this? Maybe it's time, maybe it's I don't have the headspace because I'm so tasked with, you know, committees, or maybe it's, you know, the, the technology, you know, but whatever, you know, think about some of these things and, and how can you overcome these limitations? What are, what's the obstacles and can you identify some of these? And what you think might be a good strategy for moving forward and really expanding this and even, you know, and for the students, you know, 
it, it's thinking about some of you know um, understanding some of the needs of the uh, you know basically actually getting the instructor to realize your needs, but then understanding what their needs are as well and what their you know what are the complications they're experiencing, and you know are, are students feeling empowered? Like so, Neve was Neve was saying that she had to actually explore a lot of that on her own if she wanted to know about it. But it really is important to this next generation because I mean. It, it, there really are going to be some challenges with climate and other aspects of sustainability that we didn't really have to face in, in our, you know, earlier in our lives at that stage. So, you know, the more we can do to empower them, the more we're going to be helping them as, as citizens. Well, examples of transdisciplinary teaching in UCC uh, that we have managed to get up and running over the years. So just um, our sustainability strategy, it all came from this, as John said, it all comes down to strategy that was developed in 2016 and teaching and learning was one of the nine key areas within that strategy. Um, Neve mentioned our university-wide module and this was kind of one of the first really exciting uh, initiatives that was undertaken within sustainability in UCC's teaching. So it was launched in 2016 as a pilot, that's how we get away with everything in UCC. We started off as a pilot and pretend that we're just doing it once and then don't let anyone know that we're going to keep doing it. Um, so it was developed by German Lally and it's openly uh, only avail available to staff, students and the public. The whole idea is cultivating sustainability citizenship within and outside UCC. It's very local. Um, it specifically isn't a MOOC because it is about UCC, it's about Cork, it's about the people that are taking part and what they bring to the room um, each night, uh, what they bring from their own lives and their own surroundings. So it's a blended learning approach. So when it's based, we do it across, I think, 10 different nights. There are lectures from environmental law, from sociology, from public health. Um, with people from obviously engineering, environmental science, basically I think every school in the university and um, business is included there, all take part in that course and every night the students that are taking part they do a learning diary at the end of the, the module they basically write a two page reflective essay and they present on one of their SD, one SDG of their choice within a group project so that's how it's assessed. So it really is kind of co-constructed, it's interdisciplinary um, and it's all about every year it changes. It's always a new module because it's all about the people that come on the night and what they bring to it. Um, but obviously it's not perfect. Like Neve said, we, you can take it for interest, you can take it for a digital badge or for additional credit. So if the student takes this module, it will show up on their transcript, but it's not going to be contributing towards their overall um, degree. Uh, the achievement of their degree. So that is something that we need to work on, you know, um, and it comes up a lot in conversation. Should there be a module in UCC that students maybe even have to take that would be part of their overall degree programme? But I think within the Bologna principles, that's not really allowed. Um, so just to, talk, just to touch briefly on this, we um, undertook a STARS assessment back in 2018 and it came up in our breakout room, actually, the kind of uh, the metrics that are there for ESD. So STARS is a US-based um, rating for sustainability in higher education. We got a gold rating, but what we found was that um, we didn't come out that great in our curriculum. Uh, you can see curriculum is at the top there, the spidergram, and we basically, we were about midway, uh, you know, from what we could have achieved in that section uh, in, the, in the rating. So we then kind of, Em embarked on a program of trying to integrate the SDGs more into our curriculum and a lot of that was around what John has talked about with the SDG toolkit um, and that all came under our academic strategy which was developed in uh, I think was released in 2018 as well um, and the academic strategy is based on the connected curriculum um, there are these kind of six key areas that all students who graduate from UCC should have an understanding or their teaching should have somehow touched on all of these kind of core values of the connected curriculum and you can see there that sustainability is one of those. So that has given us a lot of um, a lot a lot of kind of, of push in UCC to bring sustainability into all of our teaching and that's why projects like John's were then so successful. 
Um, so we've run uh, a digital badge course for all staff as well, the Connected Curriculum and you. So every staff member in UCC was able to log into Canvas and do this course. They would get a digital badge for it. And it talked all about those six key areas, including sustainability, talking about our Green Campus program, about the sustainable development goals, about their broad reach, how you know it's not just about being green, it is about the social aspect, about the equality and diversity part of our um, parts of our institution as well. So then just to touch on another one, this is kind of our latest flagship program um, and this was funded under the Human Capital Initiative that came out there in 2019, I, I think it was, that we applied for this, no 2020, my, I, can't, I don't know years anymore. So this is Sustainable Futures program and it's a joint program that we've developed between us and UCC, Maloof University and Sligo IT and it's all about bringing together science and enterprise to drive sustainability and decarbonisation. So this is really looking at you know, it's great that we are working on educating our current students. It's very important that every student within UCC graduates with the knowledge of sustainability. But actually, if we want to reach the targets and the goals within our climate action plan, within our COP26 outcomes, we need to be educating the people that are currently in positions of power and positions of decision making. Um, so this is really co-developed with enterprise so it's an kind of enterprise informed curriculum development so we have already had one year of our higher diploma in sustainability and enterprise we're in the second year of that and we just launched in the last month the pg cert um, and master's program again in sustainability and enterprise that's part-time and online so it's really kind of um aimed at people that are currently work in the workforce and how they can bring sustainability into their jobs we are also developing a leadership course for kind of high level leadership within organizations and micro credential offerings around that as well. And we've developed a sustainable futures lab space at UCC, which is all around collaboration, bringing in different organizations, bringing in different um, departments across the university into the space where they can work together and develop collaborative projects. So that is um, one of our most exciting initiatives at the moment, which really is a kind of flagship program now for UCC. And then just one other kind of initiative that we have that would fit the fit into ESC and transdisciplinarity is our Living Lab program. So this you might all remember um, back maybe in 2018, every university, every uh, higher education institution got money from the HEA for um, sustainability and education. And we use that money to develop our Living Laboratory pro program. Um, so the Green Campus Living Lab, the aim is that so we basically put out that money and put out a call for our UCC community uh, staff and students to come to us with ideas for projects. The projects had to solve a real life problem. They had to be based on a partnership approach. They had to try and test ideas in real life settings. And those um, ideas would have to really speak to our goals and our sustainability strategy and speak to UCC being a, a more environmentally friendly uh, organization. And then also the idea was that data would be shared um, openly. So we had a really um, great interest in that. We ended up funding six projects across six different units in the university with 15 project partners. We funded one transdisciplinary master's project and two of the projects that we funded ended up earning additional external funding following their successful implementation on campus. Um, so they're actually all the kind of projects there. So we had one um, looking at well-being and the time spent at desks within our staff community. We had a swap shop in our international office. We had our Open Arboretum project, um, Recircle, which was the takeaway containers uh, system, the Plastic Free UCC Masters, and then a project looking at green spaces, virtual reality and well-being. So they've kind of, there's one that's still going off those projects, actually, it was a bit late to get started. The rest were all complete and we've just launched a call for more projects. It's been that call, um, the closing date is next week. So we'll have another round of those projects being funded in the next few months. And that's been really great for establishing kind of uh, new interdisciplinary collaborations across the university. So that's just some ideas from us. 
here left and um, just want to say thank you to everybody and uh, for, for being here and, and, and sharing and, and, you know, in the spirit of cooperation, which is, is really good. And um, so a couple of things that will be coming up is, you know, we're um, just in case you had some thoughts that come up later in the next week or so, um, look for a, um, a Google um, with a Google form where you can, you know, put in some, you know, other ideas or thoughts that you may have, or maybe talk to some colleagues between now and then, and you could, you could share it that way. And as a parting um, sort of thought here is what I'd like to do in this parting exercise, say, is just um, share with you, um, go back to screen, screen sharing. And if you haven't used Menti, um, you know, Mentimeter, it's a really great resources for the web virtual teaching. Students seem to, to really enjoy it. But we're going to just make a word cloud real quick. 